In today's session, we are going to deal with a few topics from magnetostatics, namely Lorentz force, cyclotron motion, helical motion and cycloidal motion. These topics form a part of the syllabus of fourth semester BSc physics core paper electrodynamics 1. Till now in electrostatics we have been dealing with charges at rest or we were dealing with stationary charges or static charges. As you all know an a static electric charge produces an electric field around it which is defined as the region around a charge where another charge experiences a force. And one of our major tasks in electrostatics was to calculate the force acting on a charge when it was introduced into a magnetic field. And this electric force was found to obey the equation F E is equal to Q E where Q is the charge introduced into the electric field and E is the applied electric field. And the direction of this force was found to be along the direction of the applied electric field. Now in magnetostatics we are going to deal with moving charges. A moving charge in addition to an electric field uh, will generate a magnetic field too. Now what we are interested in is or our concern is to find out the force acting on a charge when it is introduced into a magnetic field. What will be the force acting on a charge when it is introduced into a magnetic field? What will be the magnitude of the force? What will be the direction of the force? Now experimental demonstrations showed that when a stationary charge is introduced into a magnetic field, it, did, it remained in its state of rest itself. It did not show any deviation from its state of rest. That means no force has acted on the stationary charge. On the other hand, when a moving charge was introduced into a magnetic field, it was found to deviate from its path. When does the charge particle deviate from its path? When a, mag uh, when a force acts on it. So here a magnetic force has acted on the moving charge so that it got deviated from, this, from its path. And this magnetic force was found to satisfy the equation F B is equal to Q into V cross B. That is the magnetic force depends on the velocity vector. That means only moving charges can experience a magnetic force and it depends on the applied magnetic field too. So the magnetic force is given by the charge, the value of the charge, the velocity vector at the magnetic field that is equal to Q V B sin theta where theta is the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field. Now what is the direction of this force? The direction of this force as you can see from the equation it must be perpendicular to both the velocity vector and the magnetic field because as you know the resultant of two uh, cross products of the cross product of two vectors must have a direction perpendicular to that of both these vectors. So the force here must have a direction perpendicular to both V and B or the direction can also be specified by Fleming's left hand rule given by if our middle finger uh, shows the direction of motion of the particle and the forefinger shows the direction of the applied magnetic field then my thumb must point towards the direction of the magnetic force. There also we see that if the force is like this that means it is perpendicular to the direction of both the velocity vector and the magnetic field. So a magnetic force is given by the equation Q is equal to V cross B whose direction is perpendicular to both the velocity vector and the magnetic field. So we have now discussed uh, what is the force electric force acting on a charge when it is introduced into an electric field. That electric force is given by F is equal to QE whose direction is along the direction of, of the uh, application of the electric field 
and what is the force acting on a charge moving charge q introduced into a magnetic field fb is equal to q into v cross b where the direction of force is perpendicular to both the direction of motion of the particle and applied magnetic field. Now suppose our charge is moving in a combined electric and magnetic field then what will be the total force acting on the particle. Then if the charged particle is moving in both electric and magnetic fields then the total force acting on the particle is given by F is equal to Q E plus Q into V cross B that is the sum of both the electric force and the magnetic force. This net force acting on a moving charge when it passes through a combined electric and magnetic force is called a Lorentz force. The first topic in our syllabus. I repeat Lorentz force is the net force acting on a moving charge when it is placed in both or when it is moving through a combined electric and magnetic field. Now I have told you when a charge is moving through a magnetic field it experiences a magnetic force given by this equation. Now what will be the path followed by the moving charge in the magnetic field because uh, because of this force experienced that means there must be some change in the path of the motion of the moving particle when it passes through a magnetic field or what is the trajectory followed by the charge particle um, by the moving charge when it enters into the magnetic field because of the magnetic force experienced by it. So, we are going to discuss about what is the path followed by the moving charge when it moves through a magnetic field under the influence of the magnetic force. Here we have to consider two cases. Case 1 when our moving charge is moving perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. I will draw it here. The case 1 is when my charge particle is moving if B is the direction of the applied magnetic field, my charge particle is moving along this direction that is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. And the second case, case 2 is when my charge particle is moving at an angle theta with respect to the magnetic field. Now magnetic field is along the x axis and this is the y axis the charge particle is moving at some angle theta with respect to the magnetic field. In both these cases the trajectory is traced out by the particle charge particle is different. So, let us consider the first case. When the charge particle is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field let us see what is the force or magnetic force experienced by the charge particle. The magnetic force experienced is given by Fb is equal to Q into V cross B that is equal to Q into Vb sin theta where theta is the angle between V and B theta the angle between V and B which is 90 degree here. So, that this is equal to Q V B sin 90 sin 90 is 1. So, my force is equal to Q V B n cap n cap a unit vector perpendicular to both V and B. So, this is the magnitude of the force experienced by my charge which is moving perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. Now, what is the direction of the force experienced uh, by my moving charge? I will explain it in terms of Fleming's left hand rule. Now, here the magnetic field is acting along the x direction and my particle is moving along the y direction so that the force is along the direction of my thumb or the force is acting inward. So, as the particle moves like this the force pushes the particle. Again as the particle is moving like this the force continues to push. This process continues that is the force will change the direction of the velocity vector of my particle so that the particle now begins to execute a circular motion or it begins to move in a circular path in a plane which is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. That is if the char charge particle which was moving like this will execute a circular path in a plane perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. 
this circular motion of a charged particle when it initially enters the field in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field is called cyclotron motion. So that is my first case that you have to learn that is cyclotron motion that is the circular motion followed by the particle when it moves in a direction perpendicular to that of the magnetic field that is cyclotron motion. Now we have to learn or discuss about two features of this cyclotron motion. One is the radius of the circular path followed this radius and the second feature is the time period that is the time taken by the charged particle to complete the circular path once or the time taken by the circular uh, by our moving charge to complete one revolution. Okay, so we have to uh, discuss about those two features of the uh, cyclotron motion. First the radius of the circular path that is r. Okay, so to find r we make use of what is called the centripetal force. As you know any body that moves in a circular path requires a center seeking force or a force that acts towards the center that makes the body move along a circular path and that force is called the centripetal force. Here the centripetal force is provided by my magnetic force or you can equate the centripetal force to the magnetic force Fb or centripetal force is given by mv square by r is equal to qb, qvb. I can cancel V and V from both sides so that I get R is equal to MV by QB. So the radius of the circular path followed here is given by MV by QB. Next I have to find out the equation for the time period of revolution that is the time taken to complete one circular path. So time period T is given by time as you know it is calculated as distance by velocity. The distance completed covered here is one circular path that is the circumference of a circle. So T is equal to 2 pi r <coughs> by V that is equal to 2 pi by V into r I take it from here it is mv by qb. So I can substitute T is equal to 2 pi by V into mv by qb. So you get it as 2 pi m by qb. So the time period of revolution is 2 pi m by qb. So the, when the charged particle moves in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field it follows a cyclotron motion whose radius is given by mv by qb and the time period is given by 2 pi m by qb. Now let us go to the second case. In the second case the particle is moving with a velocity v which is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the magnetic field. So it is moving with an angle uh, means the velocity vector is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the magnetic field. So this velocity vector can be resolved into two components one is v perpendicular and v parallel. Okay. So v perpendicular is equal to v sin theta as you can see from the graph and v parallel is equal to v cos theta. So there are two components of velocity means there must be a force acting on the charged particle due to the perpendicular component of velocity and there must be a force acting on the charge due to the parallel component of velocity because our force is a velocity dependent physical quantity F is equal to QVB that is it depends on the velocity of the charged particle. So if the particle has a perpendicular component of velocity there must be a force acting on it due to the perpendicular component and if there is a parallel component of velocity there must be a force acting on it due to the parallel component also. So let us calculate what are these two forces. So the force acting on the charged particle due to the perpendicular component of velocity is given by I will denote it as Fb perpendicular is equal to Q into V perpendicular cross B that is equal to Q V perpendicular B sin theta. Now what is the angle between the perpendicular component and the magnetic field? 90 degree. So it is sin 90. So it is Q V perpendicular B into 1 or Q V perpendicular B n cap in a direction perpendicular to both V perpendicular and B. 
Now what is the effect of this force? We have learnt in the first case that because uh, if the velocity is acting perpendicular to the field, the charged particle must follow a circular path or a cyclotron motion. So because of the first component of velocity, uh, there a force acts on the charged particle which compels it to follow a circular path. Now let us see what is the force acting on the charged particle due to the second component of velocity that is Fb parallel. Fb parallel is equal to Q into V parallel cross B. Now that is equal to Q V parallel B sin of the angle between them. Now what is the angle between V parallel and B? Both of them are in the same direction so that the angle between them is 0. So you get sin of 0 which is 0. So the net force acting on this on the particle along the direction of the parallel component of velocity is 0. What does that mean? No force acts on the charged particle along the direction of the parallel component of velocity. That means the charged particle uh, executes a translatory motion or it moves in a straight line with this uniform velocity or constant velocity v parallel. So, now the net result is that because of the two components of velocity, the charged particle in one case it experiences a force as a result of which it uh, executes a circular path and in the second case because of the second component of velocity it is following a straight line motion with a constant velocity. The net result of these two is that the charged particle will now execute a, a circular path which moves forward which moves forward along a direction parallel to that of the magnetic field because of the uh, both the effect of both the components of velocity the uh, charged particle now executes what is called a helical motion parallel to the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so, when a charged particle is moving at an angle theta with respect to the magnetic field, it will execute uh, the, uh, it will execute a helical motion. Here again we have to learn about two features of this helix. One is the radius of the helix and the second one is the pitch of the helix. Radius of this helix that is radius of the circular path is calculated exactly in the same way as we have done, be, uh, done before. So that r is equal to you will get it as mv by qv. But here the change is that instead of v, we substitute v perpendicular because it is the perpendicular component of velocity that is responsible for the helical motion. So my r will be equal to v q it will be equal to mv perpendicular by qb or it will be equal to mv perpendicular is v sin theta. So I can replace it with r equal to mv sin theta by qb. So r equal to mv sin theta by qb. And the last feature that is the pitch of the helix. What is meant by the pitch of the helix? It is the distance travelled parallel to the uh, mag direction of the magnetic field when the moving charge completes one circular path. In helical motion we know that the charge particle is moving in a circular path that is moving forward that is moving along the direction of the magnetic field. So the distance travelled along the direction of the magnetic field when the charge particle completes one circular path one complete circular path it would have travelled some distance parallel to my uh, to the direction of my magnetic field and that distance is called pitch of the helix or p is equal to it is a distance which must be equal to velocity into time. So velocity is uh, here we have to consider the parallel component of velocity v parallel into time that is equal to v cos theta into time. Time means time period the time taken for one complete revolution that we have already calculated it as t is equal to 2 pi m by q b. So I can substitute it here 2 pi m by q b. So p is equal to you will get the answer as 2 pi m v cos theta by q b that is the pitch of the helix. So in the two motions when the charge particle is moving perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field the charge executes a cyclotron motion. And when the charged particle is moving at an angle theta with respect to the magnetic field, it will execute a helical path. The third case that we have to learn is that of 
a charged particle or the motion of a charged particle in transverse electric and magnetic fields. In what is meant by transverse electric and magnetic fields or it is also called crossed electric and magnetic fields. That means the magnetic field and electric fields are acting in mutually perpendicular directions and we are introducing a stationary charge into such a region of space. So let me represent it graphically that is x, y, z axis. Now let my magnetic field be along the x axis, electric field be along the z axis and I am introducing or placing a charged particle at rest at the origin. My charged particle is there at the origin. Now what, what will be the path of motion executed by such a charged particle? Now at the stationary charge placed at the origin is at rest. So it will have no velocity. No velocity means no magnetic force. Magnetic force is equal to Q into V cross B. When V is equal to 0, the particle experiences no force because of the magnetic field. So it will come under the influence of only the electric field. Now we know that a charged particle when placed in an electric field experiences a force F given by QE and this electric force will be along the direction of the electric field. So what will happen? The charged particle gets accelerated along the direction of the electric field. That means it will start moving with a velocity V along the direction of the electric field. Once it starts moving, the magnetic force comes into play because a V has been generated there. So the mag what is the function of the magnetic force? We have learned that in both the previous cases, any charged particle placed in a magnetic field will, uh, will have a curved path because of the effect of the magnetic force. It can either be a cyclotron motion or a helical motion, whatever it may be, the charged particle follows a curved path. Now what happens is, as the velocity of the charged particle increases because of the applied electric field or because of the electric force acting on it, it uh, the magnetic force compels the particle to follow a curved path. As the velocity of the charged particle increases because of electric force, the velocity increases and the magnetic force curves the charged particle or it uh, compels the charged particle to uh, follow a more curved path. So that now the charged particle turns towards the y axis, the pa charged particle just turns towards the y axis. As soon as the charged particle moves towards the y axis, what happens is that it is now moving against the electric force. Electric force is acting in this direction, but the charged particle is moving downward. That means uh, its velocity will reduce or the charged particle will decelerate. So that by the time it reaches the y axis or touches the y axis, its velocity will be zero the magnetic force acting on it will be zero and the charge will be completely at rest by the time it reaches this position. Now the charge is exactly in the same condition as it was at the origin when it was placed at the origin that is it is at rest. Only the difference is that it has moved some distance along the y axis. So this uh, again what happens our cycle repeats that is the, the velocity of the particle is zero, magnetic force acting on the particle is zero. So it is only under the influence of the electric field and an electric force acting on it which will accelerate the charged particle up with the velocity v. Now magnetic force comes into play. It will try to curve the path of motion of the charged particle and as velocity increases the curvature of the path will increase and the charged particle then turns towards the y axis. Once it turns towards the y axis, it is moving opposite to the direction of the electric field, its velocity will reduce. By the time it touches the y axis, its velocity will be zero, magnetic force will be zero and the particle will be at rest. And this process continues or this cycle continues. So this is the path of motion followed by a charged particle when it, when it is moving through a mutually perpendicular electric and magnetic field and this path is called a cycloidal path. So the charged particle when placed in a transverse electric and magnetic field follows a cycloidal path. I, I hope it is clear to you. Now, 
Let us sum up what all things we have learned in this session. First, Lorentz force that is the resultant force acting on a charged particle in a combined electric and magnetic field is called Lorentz force. F is equal to Q e plus Q into V cross B. The second part what we tried to do was we found out the trajectories of a moving charge in a magnetic field. The first condition the charge particle is moving perpendicular to the direction of the applied field. Then the path followed by the particle is a circular path or the charge particle executes cyclotron motion. The second case when the charge particle is moving at some angle with respect to my magnetic field then the charge particle executes a helical motion. And the third case when the charge a stationary charge is placed in a crossed electric and magnetic field or when a, a stationary charge is placed in a transverse electric and magnetic field then the path followed by the charge particle is a cycloidal path as shown in this figure. Next what we have to learn is the mathematical proof of this cycloidal path followed by a stationary charge placed in the uh, transverse electric and magnetic field which we will continue in the next session. So I hope all what has been discussed till now is clear to you, you are uh, for any doubts you are free to contact, thank you.